Uh, thank you, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is an update with the members of my cabinet that are on task on the Marshall Fire aftermath. Uh, these are the folks involved with fire response at the state level. Uh, we've had many meetings uh, through the weekend over the last few days to make sure that we can bring help to the tens of thousands of Coloradans who have been impacted, uh, approximately 1,000 that have lost uh, everything, uh, hundreds that have lost their business or place of work. Um, our team at the state level on this response includes Public Safety Director Stan Hilke, Insurance Commissioner Mike Conway, who had a uh, virtual town hall with insurance policyholders um, last night, hundreds of people providing information that the state, we support consumers um, in, in getting the most from their insurance companies. Department of Labor and Employment Director Joe Barella, Department of Local Affairs Director Rick Garcia, Division of Homeland Security and Emergency, Emergency Management Director Kevin Klein, Office of Economic Development and International Trade, um, some of the uh, help for some of the businesses that were destroyed or businesses that weren't destroyed but lost all their customers for a period of, of, of a week or more. Um, also, uh, Commissioner of Education Katie Anthes, fortunately no schools were destroyed in the Marshall Fire, uh, but uh, it is very difficult for families to find housing near where their kids are in school. And for that sense of normalcy, it's important for kids to return to school, Superior Elementary, Monarch High School, great schools. Uh, and a lot of families um, who attend those schools were affected. And of course, our very own Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera, uh, who was in the um, uh, one of the uh, pre-evacuation zone herself uh, in Broomfield. Uh, in these day uh, days and weeks after the fires, our top priority is to get uh, the Coloradans that were affected, uh, the resources they need, every kind of resource. It means uh, financial, mental health support, housing, you name it, to rebuild their lives. I'm so proud of how the community has leapt into action. The full weight of federal, state, philanthropic, and local resources is being made available to everybody impacted by this fire. I was over at the Disaster Assistance Center at 1755 South Public Road in Lafayette. Uh, they have everything from uh, food uh, vouchers to housing vouchers to cash cards to assistance with FEMA. Uh, the insurance companies are set up there in the insurance village. Uh, if you were affected, you can go to 1755 South Public Road in Lafayette. And affected doesn't mean uh, just that your, 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 your home was destroyed. You might have been evacuated, returned, you can't live because there's the frozen pipes, it's flooded. Uh, there is some immediate cash assistance for you uh, and help with lodging if you need it, if you're unable to return to your home for whatever reason. Uh, President Biden was quick to authorize federal support after my verbal request. FEMA Administrator Criswell was on the ground within 48 hours of the fire. Uh, it's really truly a response of every level of government, local, state, federal, and we are greatly appreciative of our philanthropic partners who've uh, donated to help people as well. The Disaster Assistance Center is open 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. It'll be open as long as it's needed. Boulder County Southeast Hub, 1755 South Public Road in Lafayette. If you've been affected, stop by. Uh, the nonprofit providers are in there, FEMA's in there, the insurers are there, the state is there. We are there to help. Um, you can also connect with temporary housing providers, get clothing, uh, grocery vouchers, uh, phone chargers, pet food, uh, whatever you need. Uh, the best part is you don't even have to know what you need when you show up. The, the center has resource navigators who will listen to your story to help you identify what might be most helpful to you, whether it's FEMA, whether it's a nonprofit assistance, uh, and I want to emphasize your home doesn't have to be lost to utilize resources from the disaster center or even damaged. You may uh, have simply had to evacuate for a while and, and, and not be able to return or have lost uh, the food in your refrigerator because it's spoiled. Uh, uh, the DAC can offer counseling services, connect you with the help you need. If you need help transportation getting to the Boulder County Southeast Hub, the Disaster Recovery Center, we do offer that as well. You can call Mobility at 303. 447-9636 to help get you to the Disaster Recovery Center. Uh, you can also apply for FEMA uh, disasterassistance.gov, Boulder County Public Call Center, 303-413-7730. Uh, and uh, we are here to help you. Um, I'm pleased to also announce we'll be providing critical tax relief to Coloradans impacted by the fire. Uh, we are giving folks more time on an emergency basis on all filing and payment deadlines that mirrors the IRS measures in the same disaster area. A relief is being offered to anyone within an area identified 
uh, by the Federal Emergency Management Agency has qualified for individual assistance. That's uh, the larger area of everyone who was affected by the fires. To find details on those deadlines that have been waived, you can go to tax.colorado.gov. Uh, this is our team at the state level that is here to serve you, the people who are impacted by the fire. Uh, we will also shortly in the next week or two be announcing the governor's office lead on uh, the Marshall Fire response uh, and identifying that person as well. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera to speak more about mental health resources uh, that are available for uh, what is, for many people, uh, the most traumatic events that they've experienced in their lives. Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the Governor, uh, his Chief of Staff, cabinet members and our partners at the federal, county, and local levels, and all the volunteers uh, for their quick response and tireless efforts in confronting this crisis. Over the coming weeks and months, the affected communities will come together to grieve, comfort, and support one another and begin the process of rebuilding. And as the governor said, we will be with them every step of the way. The evacu as, as the governor mentioned, the evacuation orders stopped just miles short of my own home. And I shared the fear and frantic preparations of my neighbors in Superior and Louisville, but was fortunate to be able to remain safely in place. But far too many of my neighbors were not so fortunate and are beginning the new year without a roof over their heads. It would be impossible to overstate the impact this tragedy will have on mental health of the Coloradoans whose homes and businesses were damaged or lost. Today, I'm pleased to share that the Colorado Spirit Marshall Fire Crisis Counseling Program, abbreviated to CCP, is working to provide community outreach crisis counselors to residents who were directly impacted by the fire. Crisis counsel counselors offer anonymous crisis counseling, stress management, emotional recovery support, and connections to other available resources within the community. As the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment works to stand up that program, anyone in need of immediate help should contact Mental Health Partners Marshall Fire Response Line, and the number is 303-413-6282, that's 303-413-6282, or the Colorado Crisis Services at 1-844-493 8255, that's 1-844-493-8255, or text TALK, T-A-L-K, to 38255. Additionally, uh, if you have private health insurance, please check with your health insurance plan. They also should offer mental health uh, services. Uh, as the governor mentioned, you don't need to have lost or even had your home damaged uh, to seek services, and there are mental health counselors at the Disaster Assistance Center as well. So I encourage all those impacted to make use of these services and reach out if you need help. This isn't a burden that you should have to shoulder up by yourself. I've been impressed by the resilience and strength of the Coloradoans that we have visited and spoken with over the last several days, and again, remind you that you are not alone. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Our Director of uh, Public Safety, Stan Helke. Stan. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Again, my name is Stan Hilke, Executive Director of the Colorado Department of Public Safety. Uh, first, just want to acknowledge all of those people that have been displaced by this fire and the tragic events that have happened as a result of it. Uh, so far, our latest number is 991 uh, destroyed structures and 125 structures that were damaged. Um, we're also aware uh, from some of our public safety partners about several public safety officials, both in fire and police service, that lost their homes there and trying to support them as well. I also want to acknowledge the local um, Boulder County Sheriff's Office, Boulder County officials, Superior officials, and Louisville officials for the remarkable and heroic work at getting people out of the way of this beast of a fire. Uh, it's, it's no um, secret that we've called it a, a miracle that there's only a, a couple of people that are unaccounted for right now, given the speed and the veracity of the fire. Uh, it's also um, something that we should acknowledge that Boulder County has a lot of experience in disaster management and getting people out of the way of harm's way, and uh, it paid off in this event. And it really was in their hands in the first few terrifying hours of this event. 
The Department of Public Safety has several divisions that are engaged in this and have been engaged from the very beginning to response and will continue to be engaged during recovery. Our Division of Fire Prevention Control, which is primarily the fire division for the state, uh, answered the call to help right away um, by sending engines, staff, and working with Boulder County to surge resources in. Many of the fire departments that surround Boulder County, Superior and Louisville had already self-dispatched, but our Division of Fire Prevention and Control leadership helped surge more than 40 engines from around the state as far as way as uh, La Plata County um, to help with the firefighting that day. In addition to that, our Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management started to engage with Boulder County Emergency Management on uh, consequence management, helping with sheltering operations, et cetera, and supporting them. And uh, thankfully, they are very sophisticated and very capable, but we were able to help and support them as well. Our fire people that work in Fire Life Safety Division also helped with facilitating the transfer of patients out of medical facilities that were being evacuated and into other facilities that were able to take the, the, uh, the, the patients as well. We've also had people that have been working with the incident management team from the day that it was in Boulder's hands and then when it went to a federal type one team, they have been on that team and, and supporting the incident as well. And we also facilitated through both of those divisions, fire and emergency management, the process by which when Boulder County declared a disaster to, to have the governor declare a disaster and assisted with getting the verbal uh, federal disaster declaration from the president that the governor got. We formalized that piece and uh, was able to get that done right away. Our fire and life safety people also helped with inspections of buildings, healthcare facilities and schools to make sure that they people could return to them uh, in a safe way. We also have fire inspectors and a canine accelerant detection team that are assisting Boulder County with the cause and ori origin, cause and origin determination of the fire. I won't be answering any questions about that investigation except to say that I have full confidence in Sheriff Pelly's team of local, state, and federal partners to work that investigation professionally and thoroughly as possible. And we must trust the process no matter how long that it takes. In addition to that, even though the winds were, were um, preventative of us flying aircraft on the fire that day, when the winds subsided after dark and into the evening, our Division of Fire Prevention Control multi-mission aircraft was able to fly the fire twice through that night to help mapping and gain valuable intelligence about where the fire went and the neighborhoods that may have been lost or the, the houses that were lost as well. Our fire, fire guard program, which is a partnership with the Colorado National Guard, also was able to provide critical intelligence to fire officials on the day of the fire as it was burning out of control. In addition to that, our Colorado State Patrol troopers worked tirelessly alongside the Colorado National Guard on traffic control points, roadblocks, and security of the area. Going forward, our Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management will manage a joint field office with FEMA to coordinate the initial recovery efforts and support Boulder County. The state's recovery task force also lives within the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Ma uh, Management and is joined by many of the staff of the people that you see behind me and many others to make sure that we're prioritizing the things that need to be get done. Uh, and in the next few days, one of the biggest priorities is disaster or, uh, debris removal and housing, of course. This joint field office will bring together decision makers from federal partners and state agencies to initiate programs for recovery. It'll help ensure those that need assistance have access to both federal and state programs. DHSEM has a team of staff in Boulder County providing direct technical assistance to the emergency management and our EOC is supporting Boulder County in conducting damage assessments, supporting public information, helping mobilize resources, and assisting with direct aid to people impacted through shelters and donations and volunteer management. Additionally, DHSEM staff are leading the State Recovery Task Force and leading the Joint Field Office work. The federal disaster assistance available, you've heard a lot about that, just a high recap of that. FEMA public assistance helps state, local, and tribal and territorial governments and certain types of private nonprofit organizations respond to and recover from major disasters by covering the costs of debris removal, life-saving emergency protective measures, and restoring public infrastructure. FEMA individual assistance provides direct services to eligible individuals and households who have uninsured or underinsured necessary expenses and serious needs but cannot duplicate the benefits 
of insurance sources. It provides funds for temporary housing, housing repair, underinsured or hazard mitigation assistance. As of this morning, 848 people have registered with the FEMA with FEMA for the Transitional Sheltering Assistance, which is a FEMA Individual Assistance Program. That number is low, but it is early. We expect it to grow. The Small Business Administration Disaster Assistance Center provides low interest loans to businesses and homeowners for costs to repair or replace damaged property and for economic injury caused by the fires. We continue to work through the damage assessment process with Boulder County to make more federal programs available to the fire survivors. The best place for the people that are listening to this press conference that are affected by the fires to get the best answers are what the governor talked about in his opening remarks. The best place to go is the Disaster Assistance Center at 1755 South Public Road in Lafayette, Colorado. While this fire has burned through the neighborhoods at a breathtaking speed, the recovery will take much longer than any of us will like. The initial horrific fire was hard, but the additional hard parts are ahead of us. The recovery will take a long time it will feel very slow and often confusing or frustrating. It is, a, it is the way that has happened in all the other disasters that we've had in Colorado, but we are committed to making sure that we're doing everything we can to streamline the process and make sure that we continue to support Boulder County, Louisville, Superior, and others that are affected to navigate the months ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, Commissioner Mike Conway is our Commissioner of Insurance for Colorado. Uh, he held and, and I joined a Teletown Hall, hundreds of families, uh, just giving them the how-to in, in dealing with their insurance companies. We are their regulator. Uh, we uh, will support consumer rights. Um, uh, Commissioner Conway is a big champion of consumers and we look forward to getting the, uh, working with the insurers to get the claims paid as expeditiously as is humanly possible. Commissioner Conway. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and a huge amount of thanks go, to goes to Stan Helke and the, the first responders. Stan hit the nail on the head that there was, uh, there was a lot of amazing work that was done to save people's lives at the beginning of this fire, and I can't thank those folks enough. Uh, there's a lot of information that's going to be coming at folks over the next few days to weeks. When it comes to insurance, uh, right now I want folks to keep four primary things in mind. Um, first and foremost, it's vital for people to, to start the claim process, to file a claim. The governor talked about the town hall that we had last night. We had uh, roughly 900 people on that town hall. It was scheduled to go for about an hour and a half. We ended up going for over three hours. The good news, one of the good pieces of news that came out of that, that uh, town hall is that the vast majority of folks that we talked to had started the claims process. And the reason why that becomes so important is because insurance is gonna be a key part of the recovery, folks. It's gonna be one of the most important parts of the recovery so, folks, so people can rebuild their lives. And in order for people to start to rebuild their lives, that claim process has to start. And to give you an example of why that's so important, it goes into the second point that I want people to keep in mind. If you lost your primary home, if you had homeowner's insurance and you lost your primary home, state law requires your insurance company to offer you uh, a payment of 30% of the contents of the, the coverage of contents on your home. So right now, as we sit here today, your insurance company, if you lost your primary residence, should be making an offer to you to pay you 30% of the contents of your home. That will help folks start to rebuild their lives. It'll get money into their hands to start to buy things that they lost, to buy things like the computers that they lost that they need to work, to buy things like the shoes for their kids, or things as small as toothpaste and toothbrushes for their kids. And that leads to the third point, folks. It's gonna be vitally important for everyone to make sure that you're documenting everything that you're doing right now. Document the conversations that you're having with your insurance company, of course, but also keep receipts. Keep receipts for everything that you have. Keep receipts for things that normally you wouldn't keep receipts for. So things like that toothbrush or the toothpaste that you're buying for your kids in order to replace the toothbrush and the toothpaste that they lost. Those little things in a typical world that you might have thrown receipts away for, those things are gonna add up quick. And it's gonna be really important for people to, to show their insurance company everything that, they, everything that they replaced. Also on the documentation side, a number of people are going to be going back to homes that were either partially damaged in the fire zone or maybe as they sit here right now, look like they don't have any damage at all. But when they get into their homes, they very well may have some damage inside. That might be heat damage, that might be smoke damage. There could be a variety of different things that have happened in their home. It's gonna be really important for you to take pictures and take videos as you go into your home and document the damage that may be there. If you do any repairs in your home, 
Document those repairs as you go. Keep receipts for anything that you purchase in order to actually perform those repairs. But take pictures before you do the repairs, take pictures after you do the repairs too so that you have that for your insurance claims. And then that takes me into the fourth point, folks. And the fourth point is that we're here to help with the Division of Insurance, and we're gonna be here to help for the long haul. Give us a call. Our phone number is 303-894-7490. Again, that's 303-894-7490. You can email at us at dora, D-O-R-A, underscore insurance, at state.co.us. I can't promise you folks that there aren't gonna be bumps in the road. There probably will be bumps in the road, but we're gonna help you get through those, and we're gonna be here for the long haul. Thank you. So recorded. you can go to, the, to our website. So if you go to the Colorado Division of Insurance website, it is up on our website right now. Uh, you can download that town hall. We are going to have future town halls too. Last night was a town hall that was really structured to give folks the basics of insurance so that as they're working through their claims, they understand some of the kind of the basic terms that the insurance company is gonna be talking to them, to them about and some of the basic things that they need to be thinking about. Going forward, we're gonna get into more detailed issues that folks are gonna be running into, like those smoke soot and ash claims that we talked about. We had a number of renters that were on last night that will have specific town halls to talk through renters, issues with renters as well. But part of being with you on the, for the long haul is that we're gonna to continue to have these town halls um, for the foreseeable future so that you can ask questions. We, we, so we went through the, the slide deck last night in about 45 minutes. The rest of the time that we were on, so for an additional two hours, we just answered questions. We just talked with people. And that's what we're going to be doing. And that's, that's what's, what's so important. Thank you. So Division of, Colorado Division of Insurance, uh, it's up there. I learned a lot uh, in that presentation. Like most people, most of us don't think about insurance until you need it. And frankly, that's the last time anybody wants to think about it. Uh, you know, you, you just lost your health. Your, your life has been totally uprooted. The last thing you want to do is learn some legalese uh, around insurance, but you have to, you have to, you got to get what you are entitled to. And uh, it, we're trying to break that down to make that more comprehensible. Rick Garcia is our point person in the Department of Local Affairs, also involved with rebuilding. Rick. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. Rick Garcia, Executive Director of the Colorado Department of Local Affairs. Let me first begin by acknowledging the tremendous uh, accomplishments and work that's already been done, primarily in setting up the Disaster Assistance Center, also known as the DAC, so quickly in amassing the urgent resources to help impacted residents and others begin to receive the absolute necessary assistance, particularly for temporary housing, which certainly is one of the greatest needs we're facing at the moment. In addition, let me also give special thanks to Boulder County Commissioners Matt Jones, Claire Levy, Marta Lachman, Louisville Mayor Ashley uh, Stoltzman, and Superior Mayor Clint Folsom, and to their staffs for the tremendous leadership they have shown uh, under these very difficult uh, uh, period of time. The Department of Local Affairs, also known as DOLA, plays a pivotal role in disaster response and recovery. As a supporting agency within the State Recovery Task Force, which is led by our partner agency, the Colorado Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, we work together to support local governments. DOLA's Division of Local Government staff is on the ground today and has been for the last several days, supporting uh, and helping local leaders to ensure a continuity of daily local government operations and providing coordination at the Disaster Assistance Center. In addition, the Division of Housing staff within DOLA coordinates the Disaster Housing Task Force within the State Recovery Group to support local efforts to respond to housing needs of all the fire survivors. The statewide task force serves in connecting local efforts and stakeholders in addressing housing needs, both interim and long-term. This DHTF convened its first meeting just yesterday and now has begun to assess both the immediate and long-term permanent housing needs of those impacted by the fire. A special role that the Department of Local Affairs plays is helping local governments take a step back and assess the community's needs and as they think about moving forward to long-term recovery. As a result, our Colorado Resiliency Office, which is part of DOLA, will play a key role in imagining how we can help build back better for a more sustainable future in a region that is already on the forefront of leadership around energy efficiency and air quality improvement. But we want to help them focus on resilient development and help prevent and reduce future economic costs if similar tragedies occur in the future. 
In closing, let me say that this fire has impacted both homeowners and renters, as well as low-income residents in this area. Housing needs and rebuilding will vary throughout the area. I encourage all victims of the fire, damaged property as well as completely destroyed properties, to meet with the FEMA representatives and register for individual assistance, also known as IA. This information will inform the state down the road on the unmet financial gaps resulting from the fire while pursuing additional federal support. Um, and if you need to contact them, go in person. The address for the DAC has already been provided. Or you can go online to disasterassistance.gov, or you can call 1-800-621-3362. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. So our final speaker is Joe Barella, Department of Labor. There were um, uh, hundreds of businesses, uh, hundreds of jobs, where the place of work was either destroyed or inaccessible for a period of time. So in addition to the, the homeowner impact, uh, a number of stores, uh, commercial office space, uh, stores both national change and mom and pop. Uh, so there is recourse if that's where you went to work every day, even if you uh, we're in an area unaffected by fire. If you commuted from Aurora or Longmont, but you commuted to a place of business uh, in Superior, uh, Louisville, Lafayette, that is no longer there or is no longer open, uh, Joe will uh, talk about uh, what there might be for you to help get you through this period where you have no job to report to. Joe? Good morning. Thank you, Governor and Lieutenant Governor and my teammates behind me. Uh, my heart goes out to the victims uh, of this disaster and really want to thank the first responders and second responders that have gotten us to the place where we can begin to start thinking about recovery and rebuilding. Um, I'm here to announce that the Disaster Unemployment Assistance, or DUA program, has been authorized by President Biden for those impacted by the Marshall file, Fire. DUA is a federal program which allows individuals whose livelihood have been interrupted because of a declared disaster event to receive up to 26 weeks of unemployment benefits. This includes self-employed individuals who are not traditionally eligible for unemployment insurance benefits. If you have lost work as a direct result of the Marshall Fire, you should file a claim for benefits online at coloradoui.gov or by phone 303-318-9000. To apply, you will need a social security number and documentation of your income. If you not, do not have access to these, do, these documents, we will be there to assist you at the Disaster Assistance Center. We are there during operational hours, and please don't be afraid to come in and help one of our business services reps, our unemployment insurance agents, help you fill out those forms so that you can get the unemployment assistance uh, that you're entitled to. Real important to note is claims need to be filed by February 2nd to be eligible for this disaster assistance program. So again, please go to coloradoui.gov, call 303-318-9000, or visit us at the Disaster Assistance Center to apply for those benefits. Also at the Disaster Assistance Center, we have the Boulder Workforce Center, and a big thanks to Aaron Jones, who's the director of the Boulder Workforce Center, who's staffing that center for businesses and work, uh, job seekers who are looking for employment or workers at this time to get back to normal. So again, thank you, and if there's any questions, please look for, the, again, coloradoui.gov or look for social media that will post updates on the DUA program, Disaster Unemployment Assistance Program. Thank you. Governor? With that, we will take questions. Jesse? Governor, with the president uh, coming on Friday, can you talk about what you want to convey to him and what you're hoping the White House can help Colorado with? Yeah, we, um, we were really uh, thrilled to have uh, Executive Director Criswell, the head of FEMA, on the ground within 48 hours. We welcome um, a visit by the president uh, to see firsthand uh, the devastation that Boulder County has experienced. Um, we'll look forward to uh, conveying to the president, uh, the needs of the community, uh, both short, medium, and long term, uh, around housing, around rebuilding, uh, and uh, I think it'll be valuable for him to see uh, some of the impact firsthand. Yes. Buenos días, gobernador. Para Telemundo Denver, si nos puede dar unas palabras en español sobre ese esfuerzo de recuperación y también si se espera la visita del presidente Biden esta semana o en los próximos días. Sí. Un poquito. Este es uh, nuestro equipo aquí, 
eh, que es la responsa de uh, el, el fuego en Boulder County. Todas las personas que necesitan ayuda pueden ir a Boulder County Southeast Hub, uh, 1755 South Public Road en Lafayette. Y, y puede recibir ayuda allá. Todos hablan español allá también. Hay personas que hablan español de FIMA y también uh, del Estado uh, y del gobierno local. Y tiene um, uh, uh, tarjetas de dinero para... para um, Uh, obtener comida y obtener um, un lugar de dormir también. Todos están aquí. Uh, queremos dar un bienvenido al presidente Biden por su uh, visita este viernes. Y um, quiero uh, demostrar, uh, maestrar uh, a uh, todo lo que perdimos aquí en Colorado y, y um, pregun preguntó a él por más ayuda para las familias afectadas. Yeah, they're different units. Uh, so right now we have National Guard on testing surge for the COVID-19 crisis, 200 folks that will significantly reduce and are significantly reduces lines and weights, making it easier to test. The biggest issue around COVID testing is not supplies, it is staffing. We had a number of the contractor staff themselves out with COVID. Uh, the National Guard is filling that in. The National Guard will assist with traffic uh, and detours as long as necessary with regard to the Marshall Fire. Governor, obviously we're a little bit off from starting the reconstruction process, but is there anything that you can do, as, given the fact that we're facing not only inflation, but we're also facing uh, construction labor shortages, construction material shortages, from a business standpoint, to try to make sure that, that the materials come here to kind of help rebuild? Yeah, we look forward to facilitating a conversation with developers um, to provide uh, as close to turnkey uh, uh, time-effective solutions as possible to homeowners. It'll obviously be a lot of decisions that homeowners who lost everything have to make, uh, but certainly presenting them with easy, expedited options uh, for those who want to rebuild as quickly as possible uh, will be a good way to do that. And our team uh, and, and our governor's office will help facilitate that. Hi, Governor. This is Noel Phillips from the Denver Post. Is there anybody in the cabinet who can talk about the debris cleanup and what the timeline is and who's in charge of that and what that will look like? Yeah, the county is taking the lead on debris cleanup. There's already been contractors involved. Uh, FEMA also does uh, some of the public right-of-way cleanup. Um, Stan, do you have anything to add on that? Kevin, Kevin Klein, Emergency Response Manager. Uh, good morning, Kevin Klein, uh, Director of the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. We're working closely with the county. The county's uh, using their authority under public health statutes to bring debris together into one effort. Uh, we are working closely with them on consolidating our, our overall approach to that. Uh, we should have some agreements in place fairly soon. Uh, we need to get it approved by FEMA. We have a uh, debris management plan that we're working with them, uh, and then we'll, we'll start working on that. But it, it is a, a planning process where we're bringing all the players together, federal, local, and state. Phone. Hello, Governor. This is Vinny Delchute. I said Bloomberg News in Denver. Uh, what is your assessment of wildfire mitigation plans and precautions along the front range, given the population gains of the past decade? Thank you, sir. Yeah, given the population gains uh, and, and, and climate, uh, Colorado and the American West needs to up our game on fire uh, mitigation and fire preparation. That includes defense barriers around suburban communities, includes rapid fire response. Uh, we worked with our state legislature in the special session uh, for additional firefighting equipment, including Firehawk helicopters in Colorado. With this particular blaze with 105 mile an hour winds, uh, uh, firefighting aircraft was grounded in any scenario. Uh, but certainly, as we rebuild and redevelop, it's important to make sure we take into account uh, the increased risk of fires uh, here in Colorado and across the West. That's it. Thank you all for joining us. Stay safe.